In this section, we will import a texture and apply it to the concrete base. We will then use the Attribute Mapping tool to adjust the scale of the texture. Finally, we will duplicate the texture, edit its settings, and apply it to some obstacles in the skate park. Switch to Design Layer-1, change the view to Left Isometric, center the skate park in the drawing area. In the Resource Browser, click on the Files list and select Vectorworks Libraries. Navigate to the Textures folder, select Textures underscore Exterior Finishes dot VWX, and click Open. In the Resource Display window, locate the Concrete Stained Smooth Clear Texture. Right-click on the texture and choose Import. Click on the Classes button in the view bar, select the Concrete Base class, and click Edit. In the Edit Class dialog, switch to the Other tab, check the Texture slash Surface Hatch option, and choose the Concrete Stained Smooth Clear Texture. Click OK twice to save the changes and exit the Edit Class and Organization dialogs. All of the objects in the Concrete Base class will now render using the Concrete Stained Smooth Clear Texture. You will notice the texture pattern appears small. Next, we will use the Attribute Mapping tool to adjust the texture mapping. Select the Concrete Base, activate the Attribute Mapping tool in the Basic Palette, choose Plane under New Map Type, and click Yes. Click once on the lower level of the skate park, enable the Original Repeat mode in the toolbar, click and drag the bottom left blue handle to adjust the scale of the texture. When the scale is about 2.5, click once to set the scale. Press X once to switch to the Selection tool. In the Object Info palette, switch to the Render tab and check the option for Use World Z for Origin. Now, select the Gazebo extension. Activate the Attribute Mapping tool, choose Plane under New Map Type, and click Yes. Click once on the Gazebo extension. Adjust the scale of the texture until it is about 1.5. Switch to the Selection tool and check the Use World Z for Origin option in the Object Info palette. Click the Home button in the Resource Browser to view the resources from the current active document. Next, right-click on the Concrete Stained Smooth Clear Texture in the Resource Browser. Choose Duplicate. Name the texture Concrete Stain Smooth Clear Dash Object Color and click OK. Right click on the new texture in the Resource Browser and choose Edit. Under Color, click the Edit button. Under Filter Color, choose Use Object Fill and click OK. Click OK again to exit the Edit Texture dialog and save the changes. Double click on the tapered ramp with a ledge to edit the group. Click and drag the Concrete Stained Smooth Clear Dash Object Color texture from the Resource Browser to the main body of the ramp. Now, select the Edge and double-click the Concrete Stained Smooth Clear Dash Object Color texture from the Resource Browser. This is simply an alternative method of applying a texture to a selected object. Exit the group. You will notice the texture appears darker on the tapered ramp. This is because the texture is using the object's current fill color with the texture. Double-click on the group of tapered planner boxes on the lower level of the skate park. Then, double-click on one of the symbols within the group. Choose to edit the 3D component of the symbol. Render in OpenGL if your rendering mode has reverted to wireframe. Apply the Concrete Stain Smooth Clear Dash Object Color texture to all of the objects within the symbol as done before. Deselect the objects, then select the small ledge. In the Attributes palette, set its fill color to gray. You can see the texture still remains, but takes on the object's new fill color automatically. Exit the symbol and then the group. Notice that the mirrored duplicate of this symbol has changed as well. This is because any changes made to a symbol will be pushed to all instances of that symbol within a document. Select the curved ramp between the lower and middle levels 
and apply the concrete stained smooth clear dash object color texture to it as well. Repeat these steps on the following objects using the same methods just demonstrated. The planter boxes, stair ledges, tapered bank, straight ledge, ramps, curved stairs, curved ledge, and curved bank. You may have noticed the color of the bottom surface of the bowl has changed. This occurred when we changed the texture of all the objects in the concrete base class. To correct this, simply change the texture of the bottom surface to the concrete stained smooth clear dash object color texture. The color fill will now show through again. To adjust the texture size, as we did before, select the attribute mapping tool, select plane, and click yes. Click on the surface of the bottom of the bowl, scale this texture to around 1.9, then click and switch back to the selection tool. Now let's apply a new texture to the gazebo roof. Go to the resource browser and in the files list choose Vectorworks Libraries. Navigate to the textures folder, select textures underscore exterior finishes dot vwx and click open. In the resource display window, locate the shingles white texture. Click and drag the texture onto the roof of the gazebo. This will import the texture and apply it to the gazebo roof. Click on the home icon in the resource browser, locate the shingles white texture, right click and choose edit. Under color, click the edit button. Under filter color, choose use object fill and click OK. Name the texture Shingles-Object-Color, click OK again to exit the Edit Texture dialog and save the changes. The roof now shows the gray fill color with the texture. Through the resource browser, access the Vectorworks libraries and open the Textures, Metals, Plastics, and Glass.vwx file in the Textures folder. Locate the Metal Stainless Steel Texture Apply this texture to the S-shaped rail on the bottom level of the skate park. Double click on one of the long rail symbols. Select the three posts and double click on the metal stainless steel texture to apply it to the posts. Now select the rail, locate and double click on the metal anodized texture to apply it to the rail. Click the exit symbol button to exit the symbol and save the changes. Apply the metal anodized texture to the rails on the stairs and the tapered face. Now we will create a new texture resource. We will use a grass image for our texture. Then we will adjust the shaders and add a displacement mapping. In the resource browser, click on the resources menu and choose new renderworks texture in. Note. If you do not see the New Renderworks Texture In option, choose New Resource In and select Renderworks Texture from the menu. In the Edit Texture dialog, name the texture Grass. Under Color, choose Image. Download the SkateParkGrass.jpg image from the Exercise Files section and navigate to the file. Click OK in the Edit Image Color dialog. Set the reflectivity to Plastic. Under Preview Options, set the object size to 3. Under Size, click the Set by Image button, click and drag the sizing marker across the top of the preview image, and enter 1.5 for the feature size. Under Bump, choose Noise, and then click Edit. For the pattern, choose FBM, adjust the strength to 100%, under Scale, set the global percent to 5, under Options, set Detail to 8. Finally, under Displacement Mapping, set the Height to 0.025 and the Detail to High. Click OK and then OK again to create the texture. Now, apply the texture to the site object by dragging the texture from the resource browser onto the site. Then adjust the scale using the Attribute Mapping tool. Set the scale to about 4.4.
Next, we will add a light object to the light post symbol. Double click on one of the light post symbols and choose to edit the 3D component. Switch to an orthogonal projection by going to View, Projection, Orthogonal. Switch to a left view and render in wireframe. In the Visualization Toolset, activate the Light Tool. Enable the third mode, Spotlight Mode. Move your cursor over the top of the light post. Press the Z key to activate the Snap Loop Mode. Click once in the center of the top of the light post. In the Light Preferences dialog, check the Soft Shadows option and click OK. Adjust the angle of the spotlight until the pan is 90 degrees and the tilt is 45 degrees. Switch to a top plan view. Make sure the spotlight is pointing in the correct direction. In the Object Info palette, set the spread to 100 degrees, the beam to 50 degrees, the Z to 7.15, and adjust the tilt to about 37 degrees. Click the Exit Symbol button to exit the symbol and save the changes. You will see the light object was added to each instance of the light post symbol. In this rendered view, you can also see the wireframe representation of the light objects. To disable this, go to Tools, Options, Vectorworks Preferences. In the Display tab, set Display Light Objects to Only in Wireframe. We will place several image prop objects to represent the plants for our planter boxes. Image props are a quick way to represent 3D objects without having to model them. Switch to a top plan view and zoom in on the upper planter box. Double click on the planter box symbol and choose to edit the 3D component. In the resource browser, navigate to the flower image prop in the symbol slash plugin object section. Note. This is a predefined image prop object. For more information on creating image prop objects, please see the Further Exploration section. Double click on the Flower Image Prop object. Move your cursor within the planter. Place multiple instances of this symbol within the planter. Hold the back quote key to disable snapping to make it easier to randomly place the instances. Select all of the image props and set the Z to 3.5 in the Object Info palette. Click the Exit Symbol button. Switch to a left isometric view. Zoom out so you can see both instances of this planter box symbol. Now, go to View, Rendering, Fast Render Works. Fast Render Works will render the scene with more detail than OpenGL. You will also see shadows. Switch back to an OpenGL render mode and repeat this process for the other planters. Finally, we will place a RenderWorks camera to quickly define a custom view. Then we will render using a RenderWorks style. Switch to a top plan view and center your view over the lower level of the skate park. Activate the RenderWorks camera tool in the Visualization Toolset. Click once in between and to the left of the planter boxes on the lower level to set the location of the RenderWorks camera. Move the cursor to the right until the length is about 16. Click once more to set the direction of the camera. Accept the defaults in the Object Properties dialog and click OK. In the Object Info palette, click Display Camera View. The view will change to show the view of the camera. Click the Fine Tune Camera button in the Object Info palette, set the camera height to 4.25, and click OK. Finally, go to View, Renderwork Styles, Realistic Exterior, Night Final. This will render the view using a predefined RenderWorks style. There are several RenderWorks styles included with RenderWorks. You can also create your own custom styles for your needs.